Hello, hope everybody had a, a nice bank holiday weekend. Um, I normally produce the videos on a Monday, but I'm producing it today on a Tuesday because of the bank holiday weekend. Um, we chose Mondays because um, our working weekends on a Thursday, everybody in the team reports their numbers on a, on a Friday, it means on a Saturday we can have a good review of them, I record on a Sunday and send it on, out on a Monday. Um, because it was a, a Tuesday and because of the bank holiday weekend, I took the opportunity today to check back in with the business. It just seemed like four days away was too long to, um, uh, to leave before I did the, 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 uh, the update. Um, I was surprised that not much has changed since last week. Um, things are very, very similar. The update is very similar. I've got some more things I want to talk to you about right at the end of the video, but uh, we're still having great success renting properties via our um, video viewings. Um, their team's been working hard, putting in some extra hours to get that done, but it is still working. Um, on the face of it, renting uh, houses via a video uh, would appear easier than, than doing a face-to-face -face viewing. Um, obviously, just sending out a link is done quite quickly. However, with the added complexities that the general situation throws at us, um, you know, communications are quite a lot harder, slows contractors down, slows referencing down, whatever it is. Um, I know the team are finding it hard to keep things moving, but they are succeeding. Uh, so I'd especially like to say thank you to the team. I'm sure our landlords would too. Um, this is our, now our number one focus, uh, keeping lo uh, voids low uh, and renting properties. Arrears aren't our number one focus anymore. We feel like we've got those under control. We've got arrears under control. Um, more on that in a moment. A key part of the voids equation is being able to get a, a tenant to turn done. So when a property is empty, um, uh, refreshing the room or the, the house and, and, and making it available to rent again. Um, I'm happy to say that we're only running emphasis slightly behind on that. We picked up the pace a little bit last week uh, in that regard. We've got another contractor who's up there, uh, their, their availability, and we're, we're gradually bringing that back so that we're at about 85, 90% now, um, which is great considering we, we started you know, way down at 50% when a lot of our contractors just stopped working. Um, all contractors are working safely, obviously. Uh, it does slow things down a little bit, uh, but the tenant turns are still happening, I can tell you that. Uh, main, the maintenance situation is still under control. Uh, all non-essential works are being put into work silos, um, and they'll be attended to when uh, when we, we get back to work fully. Uh, but essential works like gas safety certificates and, and such like, they are being done. Um, and like I say, contractors are following their own industry guidelines for, for staying safe. So like I say, I thought um, arrears would be our number one concern, but in fact, uh, we're seeing very few instances of non-payment. We are seeing some, but uh, very few relatively. Um, we are seeing a high number of calls and inquiries uh, in, inbound from call, calls and emails actually. Um, and yes, some tenants are struggling to pay their rent, but all issues are under control insofar as um, they're addressed with the tenant and the landlord, appropriate actions being taken. Obviously, there's a lot of variables in that conversation. You know, when a tenant doesn't pay their rent, there's a lot of ins and outs, and, and, and uh, however, um, we are still getting those types of calls, but the, the overall proof for me, you know, when I say things are under control, uh, our arrears figures, uh, we track them daily. Every single day we know what arrears there are in the business. Um, our arrears figures are slightly lower than before. And you heard me right, they are lower than before. Uh, quite incredible, really, uh, mainly due to what I, I've described as our full court press on the issue. We won't be letting up on that, but we're checking and posting on rents multiple times in a day and uh, it's really making a difference. Um, so as far as the long-term management of your properties, my properties, our properties is concerned, I see it's similar to last week. Um, everything is as under control as it can be and we're sort of settled in for this being the new norm and carrying on in this way. Uh, I'd like to move on to the business of investing in buy-to-let. Um, there was a lot in the news over the weekend about house prices crashing. I heard that uh, or read that more than once. Uh, personally, I've been on a few panels, I've done a few webinars, um, and I've also fielded questions about yeah, the property market. Um, here's my take, if, uh, if you want it. Um, 
Well, so, uh, firstly, we can't view as many houses as we would like. Uh, that means that we're not sale agreeing as many houses as we would like in this present climate. We are buying a few, um, but it's not, not as many as we'd like. Uh, however, the demand from landlords wanting to buy has gone up. Um, I don't think that's surprising, actually. Surprised some people, but it didn't surprise us. Our landlords um, see opportunity and they pick up the phone and they can kind of feel that it's in the air. Uh, the net result of that is we're having to ask our landlords to join a queue. We had to do that two weeks ago. We haven't got enough properties to meet demand, so people are buy, uh, um, join a buyer's queue. Um, I can see we're entering one of the best buying periods uh, in, in recent history, it feels like. 2008, and I've bought a lot of houses in the 2008 to 2010 period. Um, I'm going to be buying all I can in this period too. Um, however, I also think uh, talk of a house price crash is totally accurate. Um, I, why, why would it not be? Um, we're going to have a recession and house, house prices are almost certainly going to fall. In 2008, house prices fell um, you know, 10 to 15%. Some people would think that they, they, they fell further than that, and certainly in some areas they did, but uh, the headline figures are sort of 10 to 15%, not as much as most people would uh, perhaps um, um, have said if they didn't know the figures. Um, for most people, hearing me say that I expect house prices to fall, but I'm going to still be buying doesn't compute. Um, how can you buy into a falling market? Surely um, you should be buying low and waiting for house prices to, to rise. So let me explain. First, there's no such thing as a ha the housing market. There's just buyers and sellers doing individual transactions. Uh, all those transactions are then added up and reported in aggregate as of the housing market. Um, in any aggregate number like that, there are winners and losers and some people in between. Um, I've got an example I've used more than once in the last couple of weeks. If you were considering, or you were more than considering, you were lined up to buy a, a £500,000 house in the, in the home counties, for example, um, you'll very likely be weighing up your options right now. Um, are house prices going to fall? Uh, could you save yourself some money by waiting? Uh, there might be other considerations too. You might have lost your job or income from the business you own and run uh, could be now in question, unstable. However, and this applies to um, our type of, of landlord and there are plenty of you out there. Um, if you had the same or a, a different, but the same amount, a different 500,000 pounds in your bank account uh, last month, earmarked to buy 10 buy-to-let properties as investments, then that £500,000 is very likely still sat in your bank account. As soon as restrictions are lifted, you'll be out trying to find a home for that money. So I predict that generally house prices will fall, yes, but prices in investable, you've got to remember the word investable, uh, buy-to-let stock, will actually see increased demand and after a, a sort of unsteady, wobbly period, which is probably where a lot of the opportunity is, we'll steadily see um, uh, a rise. Why do I think that? Because it's exactly what happened in 2008, 2009 and 2010. Um, to give you a real world example, my business buys in a poor month about five properties. In a good month, it can buy 15 properties but we view many, many more than that. We, we view hundreds of properties in a month. Uh, and of course, we're turned down on almost all of them, what the numbers tell you. We, we're turned down on about 90% of those properties. Now those vendors who turned us down are coming back to us, uh, accepting our previous offers. The offers didn't get, our offers didn't change. It's their price that came down to meet. In the short term, prices are coming down. The key to being comfortable with that as an investor is knowing we were never going to pay those high prices anyway. Um, the change, it's not massive, perhaps now only 85% of people accept our offer, whereas it was that 90% before, but that will increase our buying numbers by 100%. So the change to us is massive. Um, when you're looking at it in an in a aggregate, aggregate number for a property market, um, you'll struggle to pick out the number. Um, we say a property is investable if it's the right price. The fundamental numbers of a property that we think investable haven't changed. It's simply that in this climate, more properties are coming down to our level. 
Uh, we know this because the, the prices of the properties that we've already said agreed, um, they're not coming down any further. They, they are on the floor already, and that's that's where we where we uh, we pick them up. Um, unfortunately, fortunately, I don't know which way you'd want to look at this. Uh, once that wobbles over, prices of that in those investable buy to lets will start to rise again. The window of opportunity is short. Um, uh, you know, the, they'll, they'll, they'll start to rise again. That that landlord with the uh, the, the five hundred thousand pounds in in the bank account that we, we sort of fictitiously talked about earlier on, they are desperately trying to find a home um, for that money. Um, a house really should not be up for sale for fifty to a hundred thousand pounds. It costs one hundred twenty five thousand pounds to to build such a property. Um, that's what propelled our two thousand and eight. Fifty thousand pound houses up to a hundred thousand pounds in, in about five years, um, and I think the same thing's going to happen again. So um, it's like the the elevator came down; you can now get on, and then get back up. Um, so that's my thoughts on the property market, such as they are. I'll be buying more than ever, and if you'd want, if you want to join us, you'll be you'll be more than welcome. Uh, it's probably a good time now to mention the need for great accounting and legal advice. We've all got a bit of time on our hands, perhaps, um, and now's a time to get things planned and, and take stock and, and organise, ready to, to take that step again. It really is key, key to keeping your, your portfolio on a stable footing, ready to go forward, so getting good accounting and, and, uh, uh, and legal advice. So if you've got any questions in that, ad, uh, that area, we'll be happy to signpost you to, uh, to our sort of wider network and team. Uh, and I think that's probably a, a good time to be doing that now, taking taking stock, taking advice in a bit of perhaps some downtime planning for the future. That's all for now. Thanks for listening. See you soon.